You need just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost.
believer can become obsolete if he's not in alignment with the will and the word of God. You can be a person of yesterday using yesterday's strategies, using yesterday's prayer method, but not seeing the fullness of God in this season. Prayer makes you align with the will and the thoughts of God. And that's why he starts off says, He has made my tongue the pen of a ready writer. What you say can never be the same. What you say, hold on, hold on, hold on. In Romans chapter 8, he says, We know not how we should pray like we ought. He says, But the Spirit help our weaknesses, making intercession for us even with groanings that cannot be uttered. That means you might know the prayer point to pray, but you don't know how long to pray it. That means you are a mosafatika paradekata. That means you cannot be privy to the heart and the thought of God except you are in the place of prayer. The place of prayer is a place of encounter. And one of the strategies of the enemy in this end time is to downplay the place of prayer. That's why we are so many but very few in the spirit. That's why we don't carry any stature or stamina in the realm. All we have are glitz and glamour, no power. Brethren, Three minutes, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. What are you going to do? We want to activate death gifts. Gifts that are doing dormant in your spirit. And as a way of contacting it, will you put your hand upon your coming? And we will pray in the spirit. Three minutes, three minutes. With the Holy Ghost. Help this mother for the Lord. Help this mother for the Lord. Help this mother body, Lord. I don't want to be a man of yesterday. I want to be in, in tune with your move. I want to be relevant in your move of today. I am Tapa Shalabade. At what they call Salaba. At the side of Patuata. One minute, that is a cosmos. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit.
to come in as a lava lava day. From the left to the right, from the left to the right, from the left to the right. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Let us be activated of this now, 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 now. Every government gift, every action, every cold prayer order, every government gift. Let us be an activation now. Let us be an activation now. Now, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. It will single you out now. That grace will single you out now. It will single you out now. It will single you out now. It will single you out now. Now, now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now. We will never remain the same. I'm empowering my women. That's what I hear in my spirit. I'm empowering my women. I'm strengthening their hands to fight battles. I'm strengthening their hands to fight two red wars. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. It says a wise woman builds a home. It says we are the women the builders. We are the women the builders. The one that we build. I release upon you the grace. The grace to build in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do we not by yourself destroy your place of habitation? Do we be a compliment not a competition? Lord will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus, much less and powerful name we are Please put your hands together, even as you have your seat majestically in His presence. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Ah! Watch out. Harvesters like it. Some women have been risen now. Ah. Men, don't be angry. I can only see what the Holy Spirit tells me. He says he's lifting them. He's lifting them. Women that will do exploits. He says they will speak with nations. That's what I hear. They will speak with nations. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Somebody, oh, help them. Help them. Those that are still under the power, help them. Help them. Help them. Help them. Just lay hands on them. And speak life into them. Let me teach you how to, how to manage these kind of things in the realm of the spirit. You speak to them and declare. The spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophet. 
one activates, another can bring down. So we can bring it down. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Please, with Jesus' joy, would you please help me put your hands together for my pastor, your pastor, my father, your father, my mentor, your mentor. The man that has given, are you, are you appreciating my pastor on your seat? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. Please, let's put our hands together for Pastor Balaji, you know, the angel of this house. The man with the vision, filled with grace. Hallelujah. And in this, before you sit, please, let, let's learn good culture, please. In the same vein, please, will you help me honor Pastor Mo in the house? Hallelujah. Give unto our double honor. Hallelujah. You see, Christians, we are not very wise, though. You think your pastor is anointed? Just make her unhappy for 30 minutes. Anoint him as Saloni. You must learn to appreciate pastor's wife. They are more anointed than the men. I'm a pastor. I know what I'm telling you. What they carry. Please appreciate our mother in the house. Thank you, Ma. We celebrate you. We love you. Thank you. We honor you. Please put your hands together for yourself. Hallelujah. And let's have our seats in his presence. And I don't kid. Whatever you do for Pastor B, you must do for Pastor Mo double. I'm telling you the truth, man. We are here out fighting. Somebody is holding the defense. Do you know how difficult it is to defend against skillful players? You know how Messi and Ronaldo can be? Any defender that will face Messi and Ronaldo must be very skillful. Am I correct? <laughs> so it's good to give honor. Hallelujah. And I bring you greetings from the Anthony Campos. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the resident abode of the Holy Ghost. People always wonder why I keep saying it. I call those things that be not as though they were. But I've said it for many years and God has helped us. And it's thus still helping us. You are a speaking spirit, oh. Everything that is too big for your mouth is too big for your destiny. So I want you to declare, I'm grace enabled. I'm grace inspired. I'm grace assisted. Grace. 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 This is my story. Yes. Declare it every day. Declare it every day. You are who you are by grace. I am who I am by grace. Since every good and perfect it comes from above. It's the grace of God that gives us the ability to do exploits. It's been declared upon us this year as our undeniable, year of undeniable exploit and laughter. So for you to do that exploit, you need double grace. Ah. So confess it till you walk in the consciousness of that grace. Till the know, you see, the knowledge of God is not in quoting of scriptures. The knowledge of God is experiential. You know, you just know. There is a knowing you will know. That's the knowledge of God. And that's how conscious you must walk with God. And bring the grace dimension into your life. Grace is my story. As well, I just said something one of those days we were praying on NLP. He says, my foundation has been changed to grace. You know what that means? Even when or if you came out from somewhere that there is no hope and there is no future. Because of grace, you are assured of a better tomorrow. Because of grace. So this morning, we are going to be talking about the grace factor in the life of a man. The grace factor in the life of a man. And when we begin to discuss great um, progress and advancement in any area of life, it's important to note that more than the success and wealth principles, more than the things we learn at, in business school and through seminars, there is something that distinguishes men and makes them prosper. And it's called what? Grace. Every successful man today will in some way attribute a big part of their breakthrough in any area of endeavor to certain credentials that change the game. For an unrenewed man, he will call it luck. For a man that has little understanding, he will call it help. But for a believer that has a full understanding of the Holy Ghost, it's called what? Grace. There's always that point where everything you know comes to an end. And that's when the grace of God kicks in. He says, my grace is sufficient in the area of your weakness. 
So if you have the grace to make money and you make very little, you have committed sin. Are you getting me now? Because grace are in dimensions. If your calling is to make money, brethren, I tell you today, and you don't make a lot, you have committed sin. Because money is not money until it becomes kingdom influence. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? The greatest form of evangelism is personal testimony. Just imagine. Forbes, richest black man on earth. With our day, Soji. Just imagine, just imagine. Follow me. Hallelujah. And if the first question I'm asked in my interview is, how did you get rich? And I say, Jesus gave it to me. Do you know how many people give their life to Christ? Just imagine. That's influence. When we're talking about wealth, quit thinking about Gucci shoes, Birkin bags, and Prada. We're talking influence here. And when it comes to influence, no amount is too much. Because you are not rich until you can sponsor a crusade in O2 Arena without feeling that you gave money. You don't understand. Until giving a million dollars looks like giving one naira, you are not rich yet. Brother, sister, calm down. Where you are is somebody else's tight. There's no need to be braggadocious. The journey is still far. This morning, you now buy G Wagon, you now buy autobiography, you now buy Bugatti, you now you now not let allow us sleep. We don't measure money in cars. Oh. We measure money in impact and influence. And God is expecting that we make a lot of it. Because the apostle Paul said, The grace that is upon my life, I did not want make it in vain. First Corinthians 15:10. Start from here. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. First Corinthians 15:10. Quickly, media, you need to work with me. Because of time, I couldn't cover a lot of ground because of time. You didn't work very well with me in the last service. Please, I beg of you. Help me. Do we have it now? First Corinthians 15, 10. All right. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what? What I am. So you are not a self-made millionaire. No. You are a God-made millionaire. Hallelujah. Do you know why he has to be a God-made millionaire? If you do it by yourself, you can, you can attract corruption. Whatever the Lord does is forever. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He says, and his grace toward me was what? Was not in vain. But what did I do? I labored. And this is the grace dimension that must stick on us. It is 100% spiritual and 100% successful. Hey, it's possible. Don't mind those nonsense teaching. I says when a man is spiritual, he can't have money. When a man has money, he can't. It's a lie, sir. We are here to model the right Christianity. You can be 100% spiritual and 100% fly. Hallelujah. Where are my people in the house? You don't get it. I'm tired. No. Christ has paid the price. Did you read when they were making the garment of the priest? He said, make it for what? Glory and honor. And he told us, he has made us what? Kings and priests. So that we should what? Reign on earth. Somebody that is supposed to reign does not wear rags. Because, see, you must understand that your life is holistic, multidimensional. And every part of it must be interesting to be able to bring people into Christ. The bodies are on our shoulders now. We must carry it with pride so that we can draw men in. So for some of you, you have to go to dress well. Hello? For some of you, you are going to have to read, study well. For some of us, we are going to begin to think only excellent thoughts. Because for the people we are going to disciple, we have to be excellent. The Bible says the queen of Sheba, she fell when she saw the array of excellence of the table of Solomon. That's what it means to preach the gospel. You won't talk for too long. Just show you now receive now. I, I surrender. She couldn't go back home because of excellence. With a man that the Holy Ghost comes and goes. How much more you that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Unusual dimension of excellence. That's what we are talking about here. Unusual dimension. You come out, you come out fly. Hello? 
On the job, you do it right. You should not be the Christian that resumes by 8 and close by 5. Nobody promotes such a person. You are not dependable. That's what it means. You are not dependable. That, you know me, I'm a worker. I will tell you. You are not dependable. All of a sudden, you will not come and keep pastor with prayer point. They are not promoting you. Who will promote you? You are already wasting that scripture. He said, I labor what? More than they are. You are going to pray like you never walk and you are going to walk like you never prayed. That's our definition of success. Are you getting me now? So, if you are called to make wealth, brother, make it well. Make it with pride. Give it cheerfully and not grudgingly. Why is it important to make money? Number one, Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Zechariah 1 17. Oh, Holy Ghost, help me. I'm full of grace. I'm sent for a time like this. I'm born to win. I'm full of the Holy Ghost and power. I'm full of the Holy Ghost and power. Thank you, Jesus. You must confess oh, his word. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. God said, God said, God said. By the time we got to verse 26, God saw. What is too much for your mouth is too much for your destiny. Your words should be bigger than where you are going. Not where you are going to intimidate where you can't say. Ah, let me not say. Somebody wants to travel. He, say he, he won't tell his neighbor you are traveling. Where are you from? You must understand that the greater one is on your inside. See, all those background has been wiped up by the blood. Every written ordinance has been wiped away. He stood upon the cross and said, it is finished. What was finished can never finish you. So don't be scared. Speak boldly. Because one with God is a majority. Okay. It says, again proclaim saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, my cities shall again what? Spread out through prosperity. And the Lord will again comfort Zion and will again what? Choose Jerusalem. Why is it important to make money? So that we can have enough wealth to sponsor the agenda of the kingdom. That's why I said, until in the, in the measure of kingdom influence, no money is too much. No money is too much. There are still places on the world and in the face of the world that have not been able to read the Bible openly. We must be able to be rich enough to match such dictations. We must think of influence so much that we, can, we make the kingdom of this world the kingdom of our God. So being rich is not a crime. Don't, don't make anybody fool you. In fact, it's worse when you don't have money. Because after a while, you will doubt your faith in God. It says, herein shall my father be glorified. John chapter 15. When you do what? Bear more fruits. Without the fruits, your Christian journey will be boring and frustrating. So we need to make more money so that even our own confidence will be renewed in the power of God. You know what I'm saying, money? In our own currency, in our own generation, the most important thing to any man is money. Oh. If you want to touch a man, you touch his finance. If you want to rule a man, you rule his economy. That's what it is. So don't think this pastor is talking money. That's the only language you can understand. If I collect all the money in your hand now, you will say Jesus is Lord. So why is it important to make money? Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. So that we can be a blessing to our generation. There is a sequence of how God planned finances. Genesis 12 2. He says, I will make you what? A great nation. I will bless you and what? Make your name great. And what should happen? You shall be what? A blessing. And how do you become a blessing? First in the house of God, second to humanity. That's the sequence. Some of us have turned it upside down. So I give, I give my, my tithes to charity. You just, you just gave up. You didn't pay tithes. Don't deceive yourself. Every blessing has its own reward. He that give it to the poor, lend it to the Lord. But he that give it of his tithe and his substance to ensure that the gospel is, is being propagated is secured from all evil and can get all things. We will get there. I will show you. You know this one I used to doubt giving. I will show you. Just calm down. We're on a journey. Don't lose me. 
Don't lose me. Why is it important to have money? Genesis 23 verse 1. Because wealth generates influence in any generation. And we must stop thinking about self and begin to think of kingdom. And kingdom come. That's when influence, influence will make sense to you. Some people are just very calm, yet they are very gifted. But by the time you begin to think kingdom influence, you will know that when it comes to God, you lose your personal value. All this calm and collected, it can be when you are alone, but when you are with God, you lose who you are. To, it's either all of him or none of me. We lose ourselves. Genesis 23, do you have it? From verse 1. It's a long read of, if you have it quickly. From verse 1. Ah, my lato, Vanina. He said, and Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Verse 2. We're going to verse 6. Quickly, quickly, quickly. He said, so, the Sarah died in Kajit Harbor. This is now called Abram in the land of Canaan. And Abram came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Verse 3. He says, then Abram stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Eth, saying, verse 4. I want to show you what money and influence can do. He says, look at his pedigree. I am a foreigner and a visitor among you. He says, give me property for a burial place among you. That I may what? Bury my dead out of my sight. Verse 4, look at what they said. Verse 5, sorry. He says, and the sons of Eth answered Abraham, saying to him, verse 6. Hear us, my Lord. He says, you are what? A mighty prince among us. Now, money, you. You know, Lazana, what makes family meeting wait for last one to come? Ah, Namonio. The first, I, I watched one skit one day. The first son was, they wanted to do their father's burial. They said they should choose dates. The first son, and I'm not saying any this to anger anybody. I'm just, I just want to be able to communicate a message. And the guy, the first son picked the date, but he picked the date without a uh, kulele. So the other, one of the sisters now, he said, brother, you don't go away to make this person talk. Let's ask him if he will be around on the dates that you chose. Why would they chase? Why would they change that responsibility? Because the man is the one that will what? Fund everything. And so they asked him. He said, Will you be around on that day? The guy said, He will be in Chelsea watching a match on that day that his brother chose. They now asked him another day. He said, He will be on vacation with his family. They now asked, Okay, choose a date. The guy now chose a date. Immediately he chose a date. After his date, he put his money where his mouth is. He wrote a check immediately and said, I covered all the bills of the burial. And everybody went home. Influence. Namonio. He said, bury your dead. He said, none of us will be. He said, what? You are a mighty priest among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our burial places. That's what influence does. They gave him the best tomb. He says, none of us. None of us. You know, you don't know the value of money until you are poor. And you are in need. He said, none of us will we withhold from you the burial place. The reason why we must make money for God and in the name of God is so that we have influence for his name. Influence for his name. So that we can stand and command. The rate at which we are giving, I'm talking of you and I now, we will not be able to catch up with the world though. Do you know how they are flooding and paying for agendas? Everything you want to buy now has a naked woman on it. What does naked woman contact with is a blade? What's the correlation? Somebody wants to sell house, he's naked. House, skinny, what's the correlation? It's an agenda. You must understand that it's a, it's a war of kingdoms. It's because some of us think it's okay to just look at those things and walk away. No, it's a war of kingdoms. You are either here or there. And you must control where your money goes to. Because where your money goes to determines the kingdom that you are supporting. If you use your internet to watch pornography, you have supported the kingdom of the devil. You must be conscious where your money what? Ends. So what is grace? Holy Ghost, help me. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. I want to show us something. What is grace? Second Peter three eighteen. Media, work with me, please. Work with me. Whew. He 
says, but what? Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That word, grow, in this scripture is from a Greek word called oxano, which means you can increase. To give increase, that's what it means. And the word grace in that scripture is a Greek word called charis, which ex if you have the amplified, it will be better so that I don't need to go back and forth. The amplified just explain what I want to say. You have amplified. Can you give me amplified? Amplified. Uh -huh. He said, undeserved favor and what? Spiritual strength. Many of us, right, have come to an understanding or the most frequent things we have heard of the definition of grace is unmerited favor or unmerited access. Am I correct? It is correct, but it's not totally correct. It is correct, but what not? Totally correct. What this scripture means here is that if this is oxano and this is charis, that means you can increase in it. It's a participation. There's a part for you to play. Leviticus chapter 9 verse 6, he said there is that which you must do that you will what? See the glory of God. There's a participation. So that undeserved and unmerited grace is not the total comprehension of what grace means. So what is grace? Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. It says, so you my son, be strong and spiritually in, in what? In the grace of what? That which is in Christ Jesus. So bring your strength, your spiritual stamina. Inside grace, I'm going somewhere, please follow me. Inside grace, your stability is in the strength that you get in your walk with God. Your stability as a person is in your walk with God. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. First Peter 5 verse 10. I want to show us something. Just to be able to define grace appropriately for us. No, give me in KJV, please. Give me in KJV. He explains it the, the way that I want. He says, but the God of what? All grace. So if you are saying that grace is unmerited access and it ends there, then it's not the total definition. If, it was, if that was the total definition, it would have been, but the God of grace. So this statement, all grace, already means that grace, what has dimensions, has parts, has facets. So that undeserved and unmerited part of it is the saving grace of God, which involves the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and enthronement of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the other part of grace, which is my area of focus today, is the grace that is called the empowering grace. That grace enables you to do exploits. It is partnership. You and God. It's a doing part. You, you, you receive the ability of God to be able to do. That's why you hear people say it is the grace to do, not just the grace to fold your hands. Enough of praying for 12 hours in tongues and sitting on your bed. He says faith without work is what? It's dead. After prayer. That which you prayed for, go and collect it. That's how to see the glory of God. After prayer, go and do what? Go and collect it. So this grace enables you such that whenever you are even exerting force, you are not exerting it according to the flesh. It's by the leading of the Spirit. It's by the leading of the Spirit. So what is the importance? So what is grace now? Let's not define it. Grace is the divine influence on the heart of a man or in the life of a man reflected in his everyday life. Giving him the supernatural ability to do exploits. Should I take it again? Grace is the divine influence in the life of a man reflecting or which reflects in his everyday life. Giving him the supernatural ability to do exploits. So in summary, you can say grace is the outworking of an inward influence. 
Do you get my point now? The outworking of a what? An inward influence. So people will say things like, I perceive the grace upon your life. Am I correct? I can see the grace of life in your life. Am I correct? Grace is like wind. You don't see it, but you feel its effects. So it's the outward expression of what? An inward walking. Grace is the ability of God in a man that causes him to achieve significant results. So when you see a man that does the unusual as though it were usual, it is grace at work. I held the microphone some minutes ago. I was able to pray and declare. And people fell under the anointing. It's the grace of God. It can't be me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The grace that is at work. So what's the importance of grace? Grace produces strength in every area of weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Your best use of the grace of God is when you yield and receive of him. That's why she said you should come boldly to the throne of grace that you might receive what? Grace to help in time of need. He says, and he said unto me, my grace is what? Sufficient for thee. The grace is enough. He says, for my strength is made perfect in what? In weakness. The best Time, money is sweet to spend. Is after you just, when Owu just left you. You know what is Owu? How many of us know what's Owu? Hello? <laughs> hey, there's a new word they call it now. They don't call it Owu. Hey, hey, Sakwa. After a long season of Sapa, and then you step into abundance, hallelujah. As you spend that, you go to sweet you. Glory to God. So grace is produced or produces strength in the area of our weakness. By giving us comfort. When we open up ourselves, we receive the comfort of God and the strength of God is enacted in our, in our spirit. By bringing us transformation. Because we can become more like him once we receive his grace. And like I always like to say, and I'll say it anyway. God is more interested in the man that you are becoming than the things that you want. Because once you become, you can reproduce. That's why some things take time. For you to have the ability to know what you did so that you can reproduce it. It says when you overcome, strengthen your brethren. So why is grace important? Grace qualifies you when you are not qualified. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. It qualifies you when you are what? Not qualified. 1 Corinthians 1 26. Ay, Boradi. Boradi, Boradi, Convania. Oh, thank you, Jesus. No, I said 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 26. Chapter 1, verse 26. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 26. So grace qualifies you when you're not qualified. How does grace qualify you when you're not qualified? Grace removes that barrier of trying to be perfect because God is our perfection. Even while we strive to be perfect, Jesus has paid the price. He says, for you see your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are what? Are called. Because if God calls you as a very established man, your pride will be too much. Because he has not even called you now. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self. Nobody can tell me anything. Brother, calm down. Your best is another man's tight. I've told you earlier. Tight. Not giving up. Tight. Verse 27. Verse 27. It says, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to do what? Confound the wise. And that God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound what? The things that are mighty. So it doesn't matter where you are, even at the backside of life. Even when they have written you off. Even when they have ticked you red. Hey! The Bible says, with the grace of God, God can take you from there. It says, it's the one that taketh the poor man out of the dunghill and set him among princes. It's the one that does it. The grace of God gives us an assurance of a better tomorrow. Verse 28. Verse 28. 28. And it takes the best thing of the world, the rejects, 
And the things which are despised, the ones that they have spoken negatively about, he says they are the ones that God has chosen to bring to naught the things which are. To put to shame. You know that adage that they say God is the one that allows you fetch water with basket so that you can put shame to the bucket. Only one that can, that can create symphony out of cacophony. It can make a rhythm out of a life that is ruthless. And create a king in the heart of a man that thought he was no one. Somebody shout grace. 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 This is my story. So how do you activate this grace factor? Because it's important that we know how to activate it. Number one. It's called honor. The grace you don't honor can never work in your life. Honor starts with discerning the ability that is at work in a man. Censoring it. Who is this person that I'm listening to? What grace brought this result? Is it a grace that can reproduce or a grace that is fluke? It starts with discernment. And after you have discerned, you come to a logical conclusion. An intelligent contemplation and a scientific conclusion that something is at work in this guy. Because how do you explain a man that was born in Akororo with no, no way to come to limelight and all of a sudden he became king? Grace. He says, Who is left in the house of Jonathan that I might be with help? Then God took a man that didn't even have leg. And he began to eat in the, sin, in the sight of kings. And caused the man that should have been his boss to not be the one working for him. Not only him, his generation. Only grace could have done that. So grace qualifies you. And one of the ways you can get it is honor. Honor is not human worship. So it's not carrying bag or lying on the floor. Honor is valuing what the person you want to receive from values. And valuing their word as they say it. Do you know why you must honor men? Because no man has the antidote for honor. No matter how much somebody hates you. If you will always reciprocate with honor. It only takes time. He will love you. And I tell you from experience. There's some man that doesn't like you, right? There's that boss that doesn't like you. Start to honor him. Do it in the next one month. And if he doesn't start to ask you what's wrong with you. Don't greet me again when you see me by the road. No man has the answer to this for honor. Because God places his possibilities in men. When God wants to lift a man, he sends you to a man. He places possibilities in men. He says, believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you shall what? Prosper. Your prosperity is in the hand of your prophet. The earlier you know, the better for you. Because there's a grace dimension to everything. Honor. Spouse, husband, honor your wife. They are made in the image and the likeness of the Holy Ghost. So by natural creation, they are more sensitive than us. Don't let us go ourselves. Sometimes a man is too carried away with his ambition and his vision that you forget the signal. The way the God talks to you is by your wife. He will tell you, baby, slow down. Sir, if you don't slow down, I speak from experience. I speak from experience. Number two, how can you activate the grace factor? Generosity. Generosity. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. We are reading 6 to 8. Second Corinthians 9, 6. Generosity activates the grace dimension. The great component of all grace. You see, we know that people are in grace in different areas, right? So somebody might have a grace in the area of wealth, another person in the grace of counseling, another in the grace of business, another in the grace of teaching. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But there is one mystery that activates all this grace. It is called generosity. Follow me and see. He said, but I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also report sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also report bountifully. So this one that you come to church... And then you have spent the higher money on Saturday night than you, before you come to church on Sunday. And you lift, I love you, Lord. Hey, don't love him. 
Because they can't be, they can't be loved without giving. You don't love him. And he says, the way to show your love is to obey his commandments. Verse 7. He says, every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. At this point, change it back to Amplified. Because that's where I want to show you. Verse 8, change it to Amplified. Verse 8, verse 8. It says, and God is able to do what? Make all grace. Not one now. A collection of all grace is activated by generosity. This is the antidote that activates all grace. And he explained what that grace means. He says every favor and what? Earthly blessing. That means you can have money and not have favor. Favor is not a function of account balance. So. Favor is the acceptance of men. So you hear people that are rich, they tell you, I have money, but nobody likes me. That person lacks favor. But how do you activate both to have money and to have favor? The Bible says, by what? Giving. It says, by giving. It says, it, it said, does everything will not come to you in what? In abundance, not in little trickles. In abundance. It will come to you in abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances, at any point, at any given time, T. Not that you have contract in January and the next one will come in April. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 22, in the, in the visions of John, he said, for every month there was an allocation. Every month there was an allocation. He says, and in all circumstances, and whatever the need will be, you will be what? Self-sufficient. What does it mean? You will possess enough to require no aid. You don't have to look at any brother and not be able to tell him the truth. You know that's one of the dangers of Christianity. Matt, we shop, no, they feet talk. He says, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for what? Every good work. Every good work. The key that activates all grace. Is giving, sir. And I speak from experience. Giving. That's which our hands have touched. Finally, give me First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And I close with this. First Peter 5, 10. You can take it back to KJV. First Peter 5, 10. I close with this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Abradino was shy, lama salamaha. It says, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, I said God is more interested in who you are becoming. That's why sometimes the process will take long. Because once you get a hold of it, it's easy for you to reproduce. Easy for you to reproduce. It will what? Make you perfect. It will establish you. It will strengthen you. And it will what? Say to you. If you have not been seeing this fourth dimension in your life, you are not enjoying grace yet. If, you are, if this is not the result of your life, Bros, it's not the full grace. And today, it's an opportunity for you to tap into that fullness of grace. First of all, we're going to pray. And after the prayer, we're going to give so that we can activate that grace. And what are we praying about? There is a grace that separates men even amongst his peers. It's not a function of knowledge. Sir. There are PhD holders that cannot eat food. The worst set of people are teachers in business school because they only teach, they don't have business. <laughs> you will get it when you get home. So you will pray. There is a grace that makes it impossible for men to reject you. It's called the grace of ease of accomplishment. That's what you want to pray about. Would you rise up on your feet and we'll pray. And what are you praying about? Lord, place upon my life today. The grace that makes it impossible for men to reject me. Place upon my life today the grace that will set me apart in my industry. Will you open up your mouth and pray? Janda kofratida zekopatika pailo kami and eskapatwate shalabarabada da 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 akakuku pakatwa 
cocina capelate hombre hombre sari nutiale zoconuate copila va 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 ropechailo pia kalila selemena vigo bele de 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 bahasia the grace that will make it impossible for men to reject me Lord, place something upon my life this morning. A grace, an anointing, your favor, everything I require to stand out. Lord, place upon me today. Place upon my business. Place upon my children. Place upon my career. Place upon the works of my hand. Place upon my ministry. In Jesus' matchless and powerful name we are prayed. And I join my faith with yours this morning. And I decree. Everything that was difficult in yesteryear. It has become easy in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the grace that will cause you to be revealed to your world. In the mighty name of Jesus. From today, enjoy the grace that gives you access to the heart of kings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the ability of the spirit that will cause you to be effective, productive and efficient in all that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus. The ability to conceptualize ideas, strategies, systems, and concepts that will bring you to global recognition. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, you will sit only with kings and not with men. men. In Jesus' matchless and powerful name we are praying. Will you put your hands together for Jesus?